Hello everyone, it has it from Azure Users back, and finally we're talking about a movie that has been released in theaters. I reviewed this, and I saw her actually a week earlier, because I got to go to an early screening, but I figured now is probably a good time to talk about now it's fully out, which is If. John Krasinski's uh, uh, CGI uh, live-action hybrid kids' uh, family film, about imaginary friends, and well, um, it seems like everyone's uh, really sure what to think of it. I mean, it's got a lot of mixed reviews, and yeah, I, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, let's get on the plot. Our story focuses on a young girl named B. B is currently. Dealing with the fact that her mother has just recently passed away due to illness. And her father, who Chris, John Krasinski plays, is about to go in for heart surgery. So she's living with her grandmother and is trying her best not to uh, associate herself with the fun things, you know, she used to do as a, as a kid. And try to be acting more like an adult. Yeah, we're going in that direction. All that changes when she spots a mysterious creature walking around that looks otherworldly. This this creature is known as an if and the creature and she discovers she also knows an imaginary friend and she finds out she can actually communicate with it. The only other person who can is her is the guy who lives up is the man who lives apparently upstairs in the same apartment complex as her grandmother, a man named Cal, played by Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds initial is initially very um you know, reluctant to to talk about it and believes it, you know. Yeah, and even B is a bit like she doesn't really want to associate with this, despite you know, despite apparently this you know unique gift that she has. But eventually, starts to change her mind. The assistance of two imaginary friends who live with Reynolds, um, at, which is the the first creature she saw, which is sort of like a butterfly person, play uh, known as Blossom, played by Phoebe Waller Bridge. And this purple fairy monster known as Blue, played by Steve, voiced by Steve Carell. And so she starts, and as she starts to open up to this new gift and bonds with Reynolds, with with Cat, with her, with with Reynolds's cow, um, you know, she starts. She hopes to figure out a way to to help the imaginary friends, you know, find new owners or find new kids to be friends with, or find a way to reconnect with their old with their old uh, kids. So yeah, um, in general, I think it's worth saying that the plot isn't necessarily its strong point. Well, okay, the story isn't necessarily its strong point because you can basically tell um, where this is going. But you know what works for this film is a lot of the other things in it. Like, I mean, the CGI I think looks really good. I think it does look pretty nice. So the designs of the the mad the ifs look great, and you know I think all the all the acting do. All the actors do a good job, whether they're the voice, whether it's voice acting or you know, out there. And there's some, there's some great things to it. It's definitely a charming film, and that's the best thing to describe. It's very charming and welcoming, and I can definitely see, you know, families having a good time with this. And you know, I, I do think the music by Michael, the score by Michael Giacchio is still good. I mean, he's becoming pretty much one, of really, one of my favorite composers and. To listen to see in films or film posts, I should say. And I will say there is this one uh, scene when when B meets all the imaginary friends and and goes into their retirement home, and she she starts um, fantasizing, um, you know, things that to be looking a little bit more uh, hip and you know fun, and she has them and she imagines a Tina Turner concert, and you actually. Um, they actually found a way to, uh, you know, to have uh, Reynolds interact with, uh, you know, sort of like did with Forrest Gump, where they insert a Reynolds into a to an actual Tina Turner concert or something like that. And I, I don't like it. I mean, I like, but yeah, you know, I like listening to Tina Turner's music, and you know, especially after she she passed away last year. So I like that, you know. And you know, it does relate to the fact that you know she she liked listening to, be like listening. To, even dressed up as Tina Turner and in the opening as we see her moments as a child before her mother's death. 
yeah, so that that's good. Um, but I think the biggest issue is the story. And funny enough, I think with a lot of John Krasinski's directorial efforts, um, the it's always an issue with the story is always a big issue. And you know, it's it's unf but the thing is, it's not. It's a little bit different, but it feels like feels like the stories in each, um, in each film sort of alternate and why they a little bit you know lackluster, like the Hollers. Like it's again another film I find you know to be okay, but you know I think the acting works out is good enough, and you know the performances you know the performances all do good, and you know it has its own charm. The problem with that is I think they had too many uh, side threat, the side side pop. Uh, you know, side characters and side plots and all that, and you know, when they could have just, you know, focused entirely on the fam, on just the main family, and you know, just a little bit of, and you know, their, you know, partners and kids, and and the, you know, the son's partners and kids, you know, or ex partners and kids, I should say. So yeah, they made it too a bit, add too much. This there's like there's too little, and it's. It's definitely clear. I think they needed more substance to it. I'm not going to say, um, and it's not just that. I think the humor is also humorous. I knew that was. I was. I groaned. You know how much I groan when I when they, when they nest with how it's nest apparently necessary for for you know family films to include toilet humor and fart jokes. And I'm like, oh, jeez, did that have to show up? I mean, it's only one scene, but. I wouldn't say it's. It doesn't. It's not as bad as say the Sonic the, the Sonic fart joke the fart joke in the son the first Sonic movie, but with the chili dogs and all that. But you know, I, I I can't. I just get annoyed so much when I get that, and I'm like, what? Why did that show up? It wasn't needed, and it didn't make sense with the, with the friend in general because it was never mentioned. Yeah, and I guess it's also mentioned there is a plot twist in this, and. I think you basically figure out what the plot twist is. I'm not going to say it, but the moment when I describe the plot and certain characters, I think you can basically say what the what the plot is, what the plot twist is with this character, the character in general. And again, I think it's just just the biggest issue is the story and how safe it is. You know, but you know, as I said. Krasinski's direction and you know all the actors do bring it, their own charm to it, and I like looking at it. It's got fun moments, but you know I, I'm not. It's a shame. I think this could be really special. If I wouldn't, it's not bad. It's not, but it's not perfect. It's just middle of the road. I think, but I think you can. I think if anything, you should probably wait till it comes out. And, on you know. On streaming services or deep or you know physical release or something like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't say go see it now. In fact, although to be fair, I don't know what else will be around it before we get to June and July. We'll get to June, July, and August. To, in terms of family films, I guess you could just wait till we see Garfield. Though I haven't got to that. that hasn't come out yet here, and I have. I'm not sure if, if I will review it. Okay, I probably will, but. I'm not sure how that will end up. I am hearing good things from some people. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, but for this, it's going to be a 5 out of 10 hat stars. Like, it's not bad. It's not great. Just mill the road. Yeah, it's the easiest way to describe it. It's just mill the road. But I think it does have its charm to at least you know, win you over a little bit. But I think I am waiting for the next movie, which I'll see in theaters, which will be f a bit more action oriented as I go to watch Furiosa. And with Ryan Reynolds, I think we're all just waiting for Deadpool. Um, I think most people are waiting for his for him at, in Deadpool and Wolverine. So yeah. But yeah. So what's next? Um. Well, potentially the next review will be Furiosa. Um. Just. You just have to wait and see if I, after I finish watch, as soon as, as soon as I watch it, whether I'll immediately, when I'll immediately get to it, because there might be a few other things I've got on before I can get 
before I could start making the review, but we'll just have to wait and see. you'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, Hazard from Hazard Reasons out, and I shall see you next time. Ciao!